Hi, welcome to episode nine. This is going to be about Samantha and her influence on the Soviet Union and her tributes in general and the uh, the influence that she had over pretty much everyone that she came in contact with. And so so these videos, I, I started out trying to, to make them into a series kind of thing. It, it still is a series, but I, I just want to say that these videos are more more like podcasts, I guess, because I am doing all of this live. I don't go back and edit any of this stuff. I'm doing it all off the cuff. I just wanted to, to bring that up. And uh, I usually have some notes in front of me and some some uh, videos, pictures, things like that that I have ready. But most of the time, I'm just basically going right off the cuff with this and, and riffing for the most part. And I never know where these videos are really going to go. Some of them are, are more specific than others. But the, this one, I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to go with this. And I might get ahead of myself on some things, and, and we'll see how it goes. But really, it's it's really just mostly about Samantha's influence and what she held most specifically over the Soviet Union. And going back to my previous video, I wanted to, to mention as well that I forgot to mention in that video or podcast, whatever you want to call it, that the Samantha Smith movie followed the same trajectory as the foul play accusations and all of that. And it basically ended right before the Moscow summit. And it, so it went right through the same trajectory. And that, that Moscow summit is very important because after that, you saw the Berlin Wall start to fall, and then the Soviet Union fell. So that was a very important date. And it does seem that, that everything surrounding Samantha that was newsworthy and that was in the news basically ended at that point. So I wanted to bring that up. I also wanted to, to talk about Robert Wagner quick again, and that I didn't know much about him in that previous video, and I know I, I went ahead of myself on a lot of it. <clears throat> but the one thing to, to note there that I did find when I was first researching this was that he definitely seemed that he could be inconsistent and contradictory and, I guess, out, outright lying, I guess, in a way. And we saw that where he's telling Cheryl Grant that there's plenty of conflict. And then he tells somebody else that it ended because there wasn't enough conflict. So, and we're going to see that with Robert Wagner, especially with regarding Samantha, you're going to see that happen with him where he says one thing and then says another and, it, and, and getting ahead of myself here again, because we'll talk about Robert Wagner down the road, but I just wanted to bring up, bring up that point with him as well. So, so we'll get into this video and Here's Samantha's statue outside the Augusta State Museum, and I'll just go through and list the tributes that I that I know about, and I'm sure there's more, and I'm probably forgetting some here, but I just wanted to go through and talk about how how important she was, and and how loved she was, and and in the aftermath of her death, what happened, and obviously the first one, Samantha Smith Foundation by her mom Jane in October of 1985. And they also made a Samantha Smith Day in Maine, which was the first Monday of June, and that was established in 1987, I believe. These are the U U.S. tributes. I'll get to the USSR ones after this. There's the statue in front of Augusta, the the museum in Augusta. And this, I think it, originally the idea for this was that they were going to have a statue of her in actually Auburn Lewiston in one of the malls there. And that changed, and they wound up putting the statue here. There's a, a school in the state of Washington that I believe was named after her. There's an apartment dorm at the University of Maine that's named after her. There's a clay medallion was made of her by Lee Iacocca's cousin. Uh, the first Children's Peace Award, and we're going to get to that. We'll get to that video after this, after we talk about this. We'll, we'll get back to that. Um, there's the Samantha Smith World Peace Camp in Maine. That was close to the to the plane crash. I'm not sure if that's still there. And there was a Samantha Smith World Peace card done by Carlton Cards. So there was a lot of stuff done, but where it really, really hit home was in the, in the Soviet Union. And here's a picture of her in, in our tech again. And we're going to come back to this picture later in the, in this uh, video podcast. And but I'll, I'll talk about the the tributes 
that the USSR gave her. Um, there's the Samantha Smith Mu- Museum of the International Chil- Children's Mu- uh, Children's Movement. There was a cruise boat in Yalta named after her. There was Project Samantha, which was a book in an opera. The opera was supposed to be by Mikhail Ziv. There was a diamond discovered in Myrny, which I believe means peaceful. Minor Planet 3147 was named after her and discovered by Ludmila Chernik. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but uh, they, they issued a postage stamp of Samantha. 12,000 foot peak in the Caucasus Mountains named after and it, her. It was named Mount Sam, Samantha Smith. There was a song called Samantha's Song by a Russian composer. Samantha was taught, I believe, in the fifth grade to the students in the USSR. I'm not sure if, she, if they still do talk about her there. That's a question that if anybody's listening to this from the Soviet Union, there's a lot of stuff that I'm, I'm not entirely sure about over there. And if anybody's listening to this, I'm I'm always willing to hear. And actually, any anything you, that you know about Samantha, like how she affected you and, and things like that, if you ever want to shoot me an e- email, absolutely go ahead and do that. Uh, Samantha Smith Alley was a was in Artek, and here here we are in Art, and, and this is it right here. This is a monument to the Samantha Smith Alley that was put in Artek. A cultivar of tulips and dahlias named after her there's a monument in moscow for samantha and this this is one i I was going to focus on briefly here this is a poem by uh what was her name it was uh yulia drunina i I believe and let's let's go through and look at this because this was a, a really nice poem the communist party newspaper pravda published a poem about Samantha Smith, I believe it was called Little Star. And that that's kind of interesting to note there and we'll I'll come to that down the road. The 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 whole thing about the a star with with being significant with Samantha. But this poem was nice. It was Julia Dronina and they had a, they posted a little ex- excerpt of it here. Samantha, you were like a little star flashing over the planet on the sky covered with dark clouds under the stare of kind and evil eyes. Explosions made the stars tremble and the laser beams scanned the sky, but Samantha believed that it was still not too late to save the earth. The wall of hatred and misunderstanding was getting taller, but we do not forget the names of those who were our allies yesterday. The child has died, but she had time enough to shake the minds and souls of people. And I'm, that really does sum up Samantha and, and the influence that she had specifically on the Soviet Union that we're, that we're talking about now. But I wanted to bring up Yul- Yulia Dronina's poem because she was a Russian poet. We'll bring her up real quick here. And let's see. So she was a Soviet po- poet who wrote in the Russian language. She was a nurse and combat medic during World War II. She she led a, a, a pretty interesting life and was, was very much... In, you know, loved the Soviet Union. She was very much a nationalist when it comes to that. And we'll see here, after she wrote this poem, during the perestroika era, she was elected to the Supreme Soviet of the USSR. And during the August coup of 1991, she was one of the many intellectuals to take part in defending the White House. <clears throat> However, she was terribly depressed later by dissolution of the Soviet Union and pu- publications critical of the Soviet system. She committed suicide on November 21st, 1991. And so that was about a month before the Soviet Union dissolved. I believe that was December 26th, 1991. So so she very much loved the Soviet Union. She loved Samantha, influenced by her. And it's a pretty tragic story <clears throat> that what happened to her here uh, with, the, with the suicide. But I wanted to bring that up quick. And so, so those were all the, all of the uh, the tributes. I'm sure there's more, but those were most of the ones that I found. But also Samantha's funeral, there was over a thousand people at her funeral, and it was so crowded that people spilled out into the streets. That they couldn't even fit into the church. And the Soviet Union sent Vladimir Kulagin to to give a speech, but there was nobody representing the United States at her funeral at all, which is. Yeah, kind of sad, absolutely. But it it does go in line with with the the party 
in power at the, at the time that did not really back up Samantha at all. Uh, Reagan did actually say he, he issued a statement that said, perhaps you can take some measure of comfort in the knowledge that millions of Americans, indeed millions of Amer- people, share the burdens of your grief. They also will cherish and remember Samantha, her smile, her idealism, and unaffected sweetness of spirit. So it's a nice statement that he made. They they really didn't ever back up back up Samantha at all, and he doesn't mention what she really did between the two countries at all in that statement. So that that, that makes sense. But he did he did issue that statement, and so so that's what we're gonna. I'm gonna play a video. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm kind of riffing here, but yeah, we'll get to to where I'm, I want to go with this here. But I'm going to play this video. There was the Children's Peace Awards, which was started by Peter Georgi. And he had started the Children's Peace Foundation. And, and I wanted to play this very quickly. And let's take a look at this here. Board of Advisors of the Children's Peace Foundation. And she has been officially recognized as a national figure by the Soviet Union. And there is now a street named for her in Moscow. The first the very first Children's Peace Award is to be given in memory of Samantha Smith. The first Sorry about that. So, so there. This was an organization that was started by P, this guy Peter Georgi, and he'll come up. He he was tied into the United Nations as well, and did some things with David Wolcombe, who I brought up before with with Peace Child, and with Maurice Strong, who was one of the the big proponents be, behind Agenda Twenty One. And David Wolcombe obviously wrote the the children's version of that, but but he started this this. Foundation and what was interesting to me though when I went and looked at it, we'll bring this up quick here. So, enthusiastic written and verbal support. Uh, th- this was interesting here because I saw this company here, World Vision, in there. And if you're not familiar with World Vision, I, they're a, a Christian evangelical organization, uh, but they the interesting thing with that was that at this peace child uh, ceremony here that we just watched, there was an award also given to John Lennon at it. And so th- this caught my attention when I saw this because John Lennon, obviously we, we all know who he was and he's going to come up because, because I'm going to compare Samantha to John Lennon, to be honest with her influence and effect that she had in the Soviet union. They really viewed her as like a rock star, like a John Lennon. But Mark David Chapman actually did work with with World Vision, and so I thought that was interesting. It, just a, a, a weird, weird. Uh, I, I don't I don't know what you want to call it co- coincidence or what, but he was the man who shot John Lennon and World Vision, and he worked with World Vision, and and also I we can go to to Hinckley who shot Reagan. His father was the president of one of the divisions of World Vision. So very, very uh, peculiar, we'll, we'll say. We'll put that in there. But I thought that was was interesting to, to look at. So we're going to go to back to this photo here of Samantha in Soviet Union. And, and, and this picture is incredibly powerful, and there's a lot, of, a lot of interpretation behind it. And a picture tells a thousand stories or words or whatever that saying is. But this picture really does because you can look at it and you can see – that she was like a Pied Piper in the Soviet Union. The kids loved her. They followed her. She was incredibly influential. They all talked about how innocent and her smile and all of this. They they absolutely loved her. And you can see in this picture how much they loved her and just following her. And that that was the power that she had. And she was incredibly influential. And just like when I was talking about John Lennon previously, John Lennon incredibly influential and you you see when 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 people have that much influence and power they can 
they can then sway people. And John Lennon certainly had that, and, and we see what happened to him. And Samantha absolutely had that as well. She had that power. And as I noted before, she uh, <clears throat> she she was starting to go away from the peace movement. So before, before I get to that, I, I wanted to talk more about this photo. And if you notice anything about this photo, the one thing that, that jumped out to me, and I think this is an incredibly important piece to, to all of this, is that you see all of the young pioneers in this photo. They all have the red scarf. And I know this is a black and white photo, but it is a red scarf. And you notice that Samantha is not wearing a red scarf. And I think the story behind that was that they wanted her to wear the red scarf, but Jane thought that they didn't want to seem like they were promote, like uh, promoting communism, I think, was her reasoning. They didn't want Samantha to wear it. But the thing is, her not wearing that scarf was far more powerful than, than if she had worn it. And I think that speaks volumes to, to what really was going on here, because this is the first time people, kids and people in the Soviet Union saw somebody rejecting communism. I mean, that's really kind of what Samantha's doing here. I know she's from the U.S. and, and all of that. But they, they see a little girl here who had the ability to reject wearing a red scarf. And that had to be incredibly powerful to, to the kids in the Soviet Union. They're seeing that, hey, we, we don't need to wear the red scarf either. You know, it, it seems a very powerful and influential thing that, that she's doing there. And I'm sure there's, there's people and kids in the Soviet Union who saw this and thought the same thing and thought, well, hey, we, you know, we don't need to wear red. So, so really what, what this is doing, it really is slowly breaking down the Soviet Union. So that it that I, that's why I, I talk about Samantha being more influential in bringing down the Soviet Union than she was in propping them up and making them look better or whatever I think that that the plan was for Samantha to be used to start breaking down the kids and the people in the Soviet Union because I think I think that the Soviet Union was going to was going to fall. I think that that was just inevitable. There were so many people that wanted the Soviet Union to fall. And I've talked about this, obviously, you know, Reagan and, and the Republicans and the people in, in the White House wanted to win the Cold War. They they were not going to back down whatsoever with, with that. So they wanted to win the, the Cold War. And I've talked about um, the United Nations and, and, and David Wolcombe talking about how they they wanted to end the cold war so when we talk about this and we and i and i talk about how i'm saying that that samantha was her plane was brought down on purpose that's that's my my thesis here and that's what i'm going with with, with this entire series and so when you think about that you think about who who would have motive to want to do that well well right here you see that obviously the reagan administration wanted to win the cold war so they absolutely wanted the soviet union to crumble so they would absolutely sure they 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 could absolutely have motive to do this and then there's the united nations who wanted to end the cold war and what we're seeing here is is samantha the most important symbol of her trip right here rejecting that red scarf and that is I think that ha speaks more volume and, and has more influence over the fall of the Soviet Union because she was warming the people up for that. She was more warming the kids up for the inevitable fall of the Soviet Union. And, and this is what, what she was doing, I, I believe. And so, so we talk, I talk about this and see, I'm starting to riff here. And it reminds me of a song by the, by the band Jellyfish. I'm not sure if, People have, have heard of that band before. They're, they're an early 90s band, but they had a song called The Ghost at Number One. And in this song, he was basically saying that from a music standpoint, he was saying that, that when musicians die, they become more popular. They become the ghost at number one, right, after they die. And, I, and actually, I think what the, the, the real meaning of the song, the hidden meaning, what he was, he was actually referring to Jesus Christ and how he became a ghost at number one, I think. 
But this, I think the same thing applies to Samantha here. And and what was it in the movie Star Wars where Obi Wan Kenobi, when he talks about you strike me down, I'll become more powerful. And I think that it, it's it's a symbolism of, of of the power that can happen when somebody dies. And because of the influence that Samantha had, you br- you strike her down her influence becomes even more powerful and you can manipulate that, that influence as well after that. Because as I said before, Samantha was going away from, from the peace movement. And I I brought up some stuff here. Let's see, Samantha on peace. And this is one thing somebody asked her, do you think it's possible to have world peace? And Samantha replied, I think there's a way we can have peace among children. As for the adults, I think it's possible, but well, I can't really do that much about it because I'm a kid. I would like to be able to do some do something about it, but I can't. And she another quote from her, some people think that because of what's happened to me, I'm a real super per- person peacemaker, but I'm not really into politics that much. I'm just concerned and this this ju- just uh, this just sort of happened. And she also admitted that she gets tired of being asked the same questions over and over again about world peace. So, I, I, and, and obviously her father was talking about people, he was getting tired of people wanting to make her a martyr. And, and even Jane said at one point, some people wrote that they felt betrayed that Samantha had gone Hollywood, but it wouldn't have been natural for Samantha to, to devote her life to Soviet American relations at age 11. So... She she was obviously moving away from the, the the peace movement, and she was not really backing it up anymore. So at that point, the, the, so the, I'm I'm just spitballing here. That, so there would be motive if you look at it from the opposite way. And I'll bring up a photo of John Lennon here again, as we we talked about him earlier in the video. And one of uh, there there was a quote that he he gave in a Playboy interview shortly before he was murdered assassinated and he said let's see i can bring it he it was everything is the opposite of what it is isn't it harry and and he was saying this when he was talking to the interviewer i think it was david chef he was they were talking about the cia and lsd and mk ultra and mind control when he made that that quote so john lennon he he you can't take a quote like that lightly. I, this this is a man who knew what was going on, and here he is even talking about the the CIA and LSD and MK Ultra in an interview right before he was shot. But everything is the opposite of what it is. I think that's very important here. And when you think about this, you think about the motive. Who would have motive to want to take Samantha out? And I, I bring up the United Nations, and everybody thinks of the United Nations as this peace. They, they want peace on earth and all of this. There's far more behind what lurks behind the United Nations than people are aware of. And I think that you, you do need to start looking at things as the opposite. Sometimes the good guys aren't the good guys. And, and I think that's what John Lennon is talking about here and, and, and the opposite of things. And I am getting ahead of myself here, but I, this is, this is kind of where, where, where I'm being led with this video. But so, so I, I think that, that, you, sometimes you do need to look at things because evil isn't, you know, a bald guy like Lex Luthor or the Joker running around in a in a clown costume. There are people who look just like you and me. There are people who wear suits and ties and all of that. And, and you cannot tell, you know, what, whether someone's good or not. And and I think that's a, a very important uh, point to make with all of this. And so so we'll go back here real quick to let me bring this up sorry sorry this is this is kind of where i'm going with this video but i, I really am talking about samantha's influence and, and when you have influence and this is something i learned when i when i was in you know when i was a history student in college that that people who have influence become dangerous they do and it's just a fact and <clears throat> here's the uh the rescue mission piece uh rescue mission Re- Rescue Mission Planet Earth is what it's called. And, and this was developed right after the Rio de Janeiro Summit in 1992, which is an incredibly important event as well. And we're going to talk about that as well. And like when I was talking about Peter Georgie and David Wolcombe and Maurice Strong and all these people, we're going to get there at some point. Just, just stick with me with all of this. It'll, it'll come down the road. 
we'll get into it in more detail. But this is the uh, kids' version of Agenda 21 that David Wolcombe wrote. And he talks about Samantha Smith's letter to, to Russia in this. And so he's using her after her death as well. But I also wanted to play this interview. I had brought it up before with, with David Wolcombe. And when talking about, okay, who has who would have motive to want to take Samantha out? And I talked about, sure, the Reagan administration, because they were anti, anti-communist, all of the, the Christian right and all of them. Sure, they wanted the Soviet Union gone. And, and S- Samantha Smith definitely influenced the Soviet Union going down, for sure. So I wanted to play this interview because it's not only the 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 right in the United States and and the religious fundamentalists and the the Christians, but here's a video of David Wolcombe talking about the United Nations wanting to end the Cold War as well, and he brings up these agendas that I've talked about before with sustainability and stuff. But but take a listen to this. There's some interesting stuff in here. What inspires me, and you can't have sustainability if you're fighting each other. You know, there's not a whole lot of sustainable development going on in Syria right now, you know. So, peace is the foundation. Our friendship, the aloha spirit, the namaste of the Indian people, that needs to become fundamental in our culture. And music is a great leveler. The stage is a wonderful leveler. We did a version of Peace Child with Rockefeller's granddaughter and four or five homeless people on the same stage. You couldn't tell which was which, you know. And that's why I think Peace Child has a real resonance in this peace building, sustainability growing process. Thank you. So sustainable development was kind of like a prequel for your story and your mission in youth-led development. It was a sequel. A sequel? Yeah. It came after the peace building process. We had to end the Cold War and eliminate the threat of nuclear war before we started building on sustainable development. so that that right there, very very important stuff he said in there, and I'm going to go into this in more more depth down the road. So this is just kind of a foreshadow, in a way of of what I'm talking about. But in there, he's talking about yeah, it it was certainly an agenda of the United Nations, and and when he's talking about we, he you could say peace child, but peace child were tight with the United Nations, and this guy wrote the children's version of Agenda 21. So he's talking about the United Nations when he says we. So I, I just wanted to throw that in there, and we will talk about that down the road. But, but what, talking about Samantha's influence and the influence she held over the Soviet Union and, and the children who are now grown, and I would love to hear from anybody who has any stories about Samantha and what influence she had on them growing up because I think there was absolutely some motive to want to, to, want to uh take her out and and it's i know this is it's this is a very dark subject and 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 i'm not talking about this to become famous or make money or anything like that like i've said in 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 my my second video if you go back and watch that you'll see that uh i i had a dream about some other and and that's what led to all of this and and there's nothing uh what's the word there's not it's this is not it, it, this, it's a very dark subject, and, it's, and it hasn't been easy for me to do this. And I didn't know anything about any of this stuff until I started researching it. And it really has opened my eyes to how the world really is being operated. And going back to that John, John Lennon quote, everything is the opposite of what it is. It, re- it really is that way. It does seem to me to be that way. But I'm just researching this and and trying to find the truth and basically trying to find justice for Samantha because if she was taken out, it's absolutely horrific. It's a horrific thing. And she deserved to live a long life. She really did. And what happened to her is a travesty and it should never have happened. And if there are people who were responsible for it, it should be known and they should be held accountable. That's, that's kind of where I'm coming from. And, and, I would love to talk to Jane and I did try to reach out to her and she denied wanting to speak to me. But when I actually requested an interview with Jane, I was forthcoming and honest and I told them everything that that I was doing here. And I told her that if, if I ever made any money from this, which I don't expect that I'm going to, and I'm probably going to get slings and arrows constantly from what I'm saying here, but I, I even offered that I would donate in Samantha's memory any money that I made. And, and 
So she, she still didn't want to speak to me. And, and it's unfortunate because there are a lot of questions that, that I need to ask her that could really help with this one, either going one, one way or the other. And I know Jane, you know, she probably, obviously she doesn't want to even fathom this idea. So I understand why she doesn't want to talk to me, but it, and and also i i believe that there has to be some some little form in the back of her mind that thinks that 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 this wasn't just an accident i i do believe that i know she she is set out in the public and on russian television and all that that she believes it was an accident but i can't believe that there's not something in the back of her mind that thinks that there was something sinister about this and so so i guess I'll end this video there and I had no idea where I was going to go with this, but we kind of, uh, we went down some avenues that, that were, that are more foreshadowing than anything, but I, I really wanted to focus on, on what Samantha and, and in this photo spe specifically with the, the, the red scarf and, and rejecting that and what that did to the, to the psyche of the kids and seeing that, that somebody could do that and reject communism. I think this, this photo speaks that one of the most important photos, I think, and really does sum up what was going on here with uh, bringing down the Soviet Union. And there were many people on this planet that wanted the Soviet Union to end. But then you see, like I talked about Yulia Dronina, and she w loved her country and she loved the Soviet Union. And you see what that did to her. And she ended her life tragically because of it. And so this is not an easy subject. None of it is. And <laughs> hopefully, hopefully uh, I was coherent enough that you're following what I'm saying here. And hopefully you can see that the influence that Samantha had over the Soviet Union with the tributes and, and all of this stuff. And they still love her and loved her. And still to this day they do. And she was a John Lennon of the Soviet Union. She really was. She was a rock star to them. So that's where I'm kind of going to end this here. And, and this kind of wraps up the entire first portion of, of what I've been doing here, trying to lay the, the foundation behind the two questions that I brought up about, you know, was there someone important on the plane? And, and that's what this did. And I think you can see that, that she was incredibly important with her influence. She was... Her, her, the accusations were, were taken seriously by, mil, by intelligence and there were plenty of accusations that, that, that came out after this. And I think I've made a pretty good case w on that side of things. So we're going to move into the actual plane crash going here forward. And, and I'm going to, we're going to take a look at that and de deconstruct that and go through all of that. We'll talk about Reagan and, and James Burnett, who was the head of the NTSB and, and, there's agendas there as well. So, and we'll talk about how suspicious this plane crash was. It really was excessive. And, and I'm going to make the case for that. So after that, we're going to see how important Samantha was and how absolutely destructible the, the, the crash was. It, it was a very uh, strange plane crash. And, and we'll see that as, as I go forward. I'll probably have a little pro prologue to that as well. Um, with a bizarre kind of story with, with Samantha and I'll start with that and there'll be a reason for that. It, it might be a little dark for people, but I feel like we have to talk about it and, and it does lay the, the foundation for talking about the plane crash as well. So that'll be in the next video, but hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully I explained it and didn't go off the rails too much here, but uh, I appreciate people listening and hopefully you continue to, to tune in and, uh, thanks a lot, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.